Good afternoon. The appeal hearing in the case of Mamshal Perisic was held yesterday. Perisic, the former chief of the general staff of the Yugoslav army, was sentenced to 27 years imprisonment on the 6th of September last year for crimes against humanity and war crimes committed in Bosnia and Herzegovina and Croatia. The prosecution did not file an appeal against the sentence and the defense asked that he be acquitted on all grounds. The defense appeal brief is available online and the judgment will be issued in due course. Proceedings in the trial of Goran Hadžić, Ratko Mladic and Radovan Karadžić continue this week and next as scheduled. In the trial of Goran Hadžić, the chamber is currently hearing the testimony of Borevoje Savic, who is the third witness to be called by the prosecution in the case since the trial started on 16th of October. Savic was one of the officials of the Serbian Democratic Party in Croatia. In the trial of Radovan Karadžić, the defense expert witness Derek Alsop is testifying about the Markle 1 shelling incident, which took place in Sarajevo in February 1994. Alsop is a mechanical engineer from the United Kingdom and he is the tenth witness to be called by the defense of Karadžić. Mohamed Kapitanovic is currently testifying in Radko Mladic case. His testimony relates to the events in Sarajevo and the injuries he sustained as a nine-year-old boy following a shelling in 1994. He is the 37th witness to be called by the prosecution to testify in person. And before concluding, I would like to bring to your attention a series of legacy conferences the Tribunal will be holding uh, in course of November in the former Yugoslavia. The first conference will start next week in Sarajevo on Tuesday 6th of November to be followed by Zagreb on Thursday the 8th of November. The last conference will be held in Belgrade on Thursday the 22nd November. The aim of these conferences is to provide an opportunity for stakeholders from the former Yugoslavia to meet and discuss the Tribunal's contribution to transitional justice and dealing with the past in the region. The conferences will provide a platform for the wider community to take stock of the Tribunal's achievements and the participants will be able to share their thoughts on what the Tribunal's legacy should be and how it should be reinforced in their countries. Journalists are invited to cover the conference and further information has been posted on our website. Office of the Prosecutor. No statement from my side. Thank you. Questions? Um, concerning the legacy of the tribunal, one of the issues which has been discussed about a lot years ago was what was supposed to happen with the archives of the tribunal, millions and millions of, of pages. There was that idea um, uh, put into circulation by the then mayor of The Hague, Deitman, that the ICTY archives might become uh, part of a larger, bigger UN archive organization, a new organization to be set up here in The Hague. Um, those are ideas we haven't heard about for a long time, and I wonder what, what is the latest about the plans, what will happen with the um, ICTY archive once the tribunal closes down? Mm. Well, Although you may have not heard about it, the tribunal has been very active in this field, but it is very important to differentiate between the official archives of the tribunal and uh, the accessibility of the court related material to the public. So what has been known for a uh, number of years now is that the decision on the final location of the archives of the tribunal lies <coughs> with the Secretary General of the United Nations. What we do know since last year when the mechanism for international criminal tribunals, the body that will finish the work of Yugoslav and Rwanda tribunal was set up. We know that the archives will remain <coughs> in custody of these bodies because they will have to deal with the judicial matters uh, for both completed cases as well as those cases that are on appeal or on trial, depends which uh, branch of the mechanism we're talking about. But uh, what has been going on uh, for the last over two years, rather, under the auspices of the former president, uh, Patrick Robinson, is uh, uh, the establishment, work on the establishment of information centers in the countries of the former Yugoslavia, which would hold uh, copies of the archives, of the judicial archives of the tribunal, and which would uh, basically render them accessible to general population, but also to specific and uh, professional um, uh, bodies <coughs> with interest in the work of the tribunal and that is something that we are working on 
uh, together with partner organizations, international and, uh, and local, and we'll continue to uh, work on this uh, under the auspices of uh, President Meron. But uh, the archive, as you mentioned it, as I said, will remain uh, with the mechanism uh, for the International Criminal Tribunals until another decision is made in New York. And of course, I, I, I answer the question with the accent on the importance of accessibility of archives for the citizens of former Yugoslavia because they're most affected by the work of the tribunal. But of course, as you mentioned, there are other uh, bodies uh, and representatives with interest uh, in, uh, in this important uh, body of evidence that has been uh, uh, amassed by the tribunal and uh, we are actually talking and working with a number of institutions on providing them uh, with access to uh, the public records of our judicial archives so that they can be used in, uh, in the future projects of these institutions as well. <coughs> And, and as we speak, uh, from our side, the Office of the Prosecutor, we are already working very closely with national prosecution services who, who need access to documents here for their ongoing cases uh, in the former Yugoslavia. And that's being done either uh, through requests coming from, from the region or uh, through requests made here through their liaison uh, representatives who are, who are in The Hague. So, um, and I fully agree with Nurma. Uh, a decision may be taken later or where they will be physically, but at the same time, the electronic uh, access is already uh, ongoing and, and facilitated. Any other questions? <coughs> Apologize for my voice. Thank you very much. <coughs>